welcome Wrench Army members. I am super excited because today we are gonna be messing around with a 555 timer circuit enabled so we can launch our light regular light bulb turned plasma ball project which will then turn into a dragon lamp. Oh yeah, I am super excited about this project for two reasons. Number one, it's like the first project we're gonna do high voltage. We're gonna be playing with high voltage, not in this stream, but the next one. So we're just kind of like, we're building up to it. And then secondly, this is my first attempt at a Wrench Army exclusive project. Up until now, we have taken bits and pieces of other public projects and we've kept them to ourselves, like our mini fog machine and our bubbler, it's, it's, it's just ours. But now we get an entire project, so that's really, really exciting. So I'm uh, excited for how this is gonna turn out. So uh, can I say excited any more times? You know, yeah, probably. So we have, of course, our first one in, Dave Beck, with uh, offerings of drumsticks. And he's already saying, guess what I had for lunch? Hmm, I'm looking at them emojis. I think I have a good idea of what you've had for lunch. Much better than what I've had for lunch. So, as you guys join in uh, from the different platforms, let's talk about the 555 timer and kind of the strategy for this whole thing. But before we get there, a little bit of uh, backup news. You know, so we did wrap up our Franken lightning detector. I'm putting together video of that now to show you guys some changes I made to the mini fog machine and the bubbler. So with the mini fog machine, remember that lame fog we were getting because I was using regular fog juice? It was super lame. Well, the second I replaced the juice with a mixture of 70% glycerin and water, you got a lot of fog. That was the only fix that that needed and it just started producing fog. The other thing I noticed is that those Vape pens are supposed to run intermittently. Well, you know, in the name of science, I let that thing run for a whole hour and it didn't run out and the coils didn't burn out. So this got me thinking when I connected the mini fog machine to the bubbler, you know, to supply it, one thing I wasn't anticipating is that if there's any air, I mean any air in the lines, it doesn't feed it. The glycerin mixture just kind of gets stuck and then eventually the mini fog machine will run out anyways. So it turns out that it is a two person job to fill the bottle, pinch the line, bleed it, and get both you know, components up on the wall. And I'm like, this is super annoying. So the other modification I made was to turn the bubbler into a regular bubbler. It's just got water in it and eliminate that feeder line for now until I find a much better system for doing it because that mini vape pen, it'll operate for an hour and I'm not operating it, operating it continuously. It just kind of goes on and then turns off for like five minutes and then goes on again. So it's very intermittent. So the juice actually lasts quite a long time. You know, anytime I'm not in the room with it, I just turn it off via our knife switch. So those are some of the changes. I'm gonna walk you guys, Wrench Army members, through it first via a video, uh, and then we'll share it with the, with the rest of the world and stuff, the final, you know, reveal. But now with this project. Um, Karis Paque is here. What's good, Rachel? What are we doing today? All right, if you just joined, we are starting our light bulb to plasma ball conversion. And so what we're gonna do is take a regular incandescent light bulb and convert it to a plasma bulb. And we're gonna start that by just kind of messing around with a 555 timer circuit. And it's like, well, what does one have to do with the other? And why can't we just build a plasma ball? I mean, honestly, the easiest way to probably do this is to steal the circuit right off a plasma ball. They're online. We could just rebuild the circuit and make the plasma ball. The biggest challenge is actually not the circuit. It's the ball itself because it's got to be this vacuum with inert gases in order to create the streamers. So taking like an acrylic type of ball and sealing it and sticking the gases in there and making sure it stays sealed, that's actually the hardest part of this entire build. So I figure as a good step one, that portion is really easily replaceable with a regular light bulb. It's sealed, it's got the inner gases already in it, and all we have to do is pump some high voltage through it, and bam, you got a plasma ball. But of course, we all know if you've ever you know, done it, if you pump uh, you know, high voltage into a light bulb, it 
looks normal. You might see a tiny little plasma beam, but it certainly doesn't look like a plasma ball. It just, it's kind of like, you know, until you take an object like a wire or a washer or something and you put it right to the glass of the light bulb. Heck, even if you're, even your finger, if you're, you know, not going nuts with your voltage, uh, that's when you get those streamers touching, you know, that thing on the outside of the glass. And the glass should protect the other object from getting fried, you know, unless you're pumping way too much voltage, uh, then it'll get fried. But, you know, we're gonna test all that out in the next stream. So one of the things we need to find a way of is, well, how do we create these streamers when nothing's touching the ball? Because like a plasma ball, you're looking at it, it's gorgeous. I mean, you don't even have to be putting your hands on it. It's just streaming. So one of the ways we're gonna do that is try and get resonance between the frequency of our output, output uh, voltage and use the 555 to do that. And if we get the frequency in resonance, we should start seeing some streamers. So that's what the whole 555 thing is about. And I'm real familiar with the 555 circuit, but what's exciting is that I've actually never used one in a project. So for me, this is the first time that we are going to use a 555 timer circuit. So I figured to spend some time this stream, getting it set up, prototyping how we're gonna lay ours out and use it so that way it's ready for some high voltage, you know, next stream. And today's a little bit of a weird day. Normally we're on Wednesday nights, uh, but this little guy here didn't come in time. And this is like the, you know, Hazel Detra of this entire stream. So I kind of couldn't muster anything up together uh, without this guy. So I'm gonna give you guys a much closer view here of what this uh, 555 timer looks like. And I got some notes from the data sheet, so I don't forget, you know, anything. So taking a look here, here is our, you know, breadboard. This is what it looks like super tiny and what a 555 timer does is depending on the mode it's operating in it can operate in three different modes so the first mode is um monostable mode um i was gonna say a stable mode because that's the mode we're gonna be working on uh but let me get through the other two kind of quickly first monostable mode is you can use this as like a precision timer for a set period of time so say the example that comes to mind for me is halloween decorations you know say you're at the store and it says try me you know i'm i'm, I'm gonna try it i'm you know i'm not gonna lie so i push the button and the little skeleton eyes start to blink on and off and then it turns off while it's not always a microprocessor per se in play, sometimes it's simple as a 555 timer where you give it an input, meaning you're pushing a button, and it'll blink those eyes at a certain frequency per second, uh, and then it'll shut off after some kind of time. So say we want it to only be on for 10 seconds and we want it to blink you know, three times per second or five times per second. Uh, you can set that through this timer by wiring it in monostable mode. Then you have a bi-stable mode, which pretty much acts like a flip-flop switch. And then finally is A-stable mode, which is the way we're gonna use it for our plasma ball, which means all you do is supply power to it. And then it just starts sending out square waves like a continuous oscillator. And that, that's what we're gonna use, these square waves, and figure out what frequency we need to set them at in order to get those streamers from the light bulb. Uh, so how do we set the frequency and like how does all that work? So in A-stable mode, you can set uh, like, let's say I want an LED to be on for 30 seconds and then off for 10 seconds. You know, I'm just picking numbers here. All it takes is changing the values of one capacitor and two resistors. That's all that controls, controls like the on off times, the frequency, like how often you want that thing to blink or do whatever it's going to do in that time. So think of it as, as a metronome too. If you want, you know, a certain beats per minute, you can set it with a 555 timer and hook it up to a speaker. And every time it, it gets that wave, it's going to bang, bang, you know, like a, like a metronome that you can use to practice to. So let's take a closer look at you know what the heck this thing is and let me show you the formula that you would use to figure out well you know how do we want to set this thing so looking at this uh, formula 
you know, it's it, we're just gonna look at the the simplicity, you know, the s- simple parts of it. So the time on, say you want to put an LED on for a certain amount of time, that first equation at the top there, it's just that constant number 0.93. Sometimes you'll see it as 0.9, uh, 0.69 or 0.7. Heck, close enough, right? Multiplied by your capacitor, multiplied by adding your resistor one and resistor two. So you can see that the variables there are your capacitor and your two resistors. And to calculate the time off, that's just that same constant, 0.693 multiplied by your capacitor and resistor two. So you can see that resistor two really affects your time off. So sometimes when you need to figure your time on, it's easier to calculate your time off first. So you get that uh, resistor two value and then you can plug it into the formula above and you can see that, you know, your resistor values are in ohms and farads. So that way you can, uh, you know, uh, convert appropriately, you know, so you're not looking at milliseconds and ohms, you're inputting everything in the formula correctly. So you can use that formula, you can do it the old fashioned math handwriting it way, or there's calculators online. So if you know that you want uh, whatever to happen to happen a certain amount of times per second, you can put that in and it starts to spit out the other values that we need. So let's try and uh, blink an LED because I do not have an oscilloscope. So normally we can hook this up to an oscilloscope and actually see the square waves and start changing it from there. So we're gonna use an LED to, as our oscilloscope. So we're gonna see it go on and off and then we'll know that this thing is working. So looking at this really, you know, closely, let's see how, how close I can, uh, I can get it. You can see that it's a chip with eight little legs. You know, it's like a little spider. And if you look at the top right there, you see a circle. It's kind of glowing or shining at you. Sometimes it'll be an indentation, a divot or a circle like this. That helps you tell like what's the top and what's the bottom. Like, you know, is it this way or is it, you know, this way? So it helps us find where pin one is. So wherever the divot is to I guess this one right here, I'm gonna say to the left, to the right, but I guess it's however you're watching this video and my left is different than your left, you know? So anytime you see your divot, right here is pin one, right next to the divot. And we'll look at how the pins go here in this diagram. So you see the pin order, one, two, three, four, and then it loops around five, six, seven, eight, and you can see kind of where things need to be hooked up. Now on the right side, you see a diagram for a wiring diagram if you wanna hook it up in a stable mode. Now, if you wanna hook it up in monostable or bistable, it's different wiring diagrams, and these are straight from the data sheet. So what we're gonna be doing is actually wiring up this uh, diagram right here on the right. And I'm totally pointing the wrong way over here, over here uh, to the right. And the first thing that you're going to notice that kind of confused me for the first time is that the pin order, you know, above me, like right here is different than the pin order over here. It's like out of order. One is at the bottom, two is on one side, three is on the other side, you know, and that's just for ease of drawing this out, you know, to, to understand. Sometimes you just change it around in the drawing, but we're going to be using the pins, you know, up here and, you know, matching it up with this drawing. So you can see pin one is really easy and I'm just bringing my notes closer so I don't forget any kind of cool tidbits that I found from the data sheet. So, you know, pin one is pretty, you know, self-explanatory. That goes to ground. Uh, then is your trigger, which is pin two. And this turns on the output when the voltage supplied to it drops below a third of your supply voltage. So a third and two thirds are gonna be, you know, important values that we're gonna pay attention to and basically how this entire thing operates. Uh, and David Beck's got his drum. He's like metronome. Yeah, I'm gonna practice my drum. And you know, that's kind of a cool project to do with a, with a timer. And then our pin three is the output. So, you know, obviously we can hook up our LED here. This is what's gonna be getting the signal. And uh, in the output low state, the voltage will be close to zero volts. So the LED will be off. Uh, in output high state, the voltage will be 1.7 volts lower than the supply voltage. So say you're supplying five volts, the actual out voltage will be 3.3. You know, hopefully I did quick math in, in my head correctly, you know. So it's, you know, five minus 1.7.
So then pin five is the control voltage. And we're not gonna be using this for this particular example. Uh, so you can control the, the threshold voltage, which you know switches everything. And that's in pin six right there uh, through the control input. So normally that's set to two thirds the supply voltage and that's when it switches over. Uh, so you can actually vary it from 45% to 90% if you need to do something kind of specific to your application. For us, we're not not doing anything and if you're not even using it they suggest you hook up a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor to it for our quick example today we're not going to be hooking any uh, extra capacitor we're just going to be focusing on the one capacitor and two resistors that i talked about so we don't get uh confused and we can see the changes uh, a little bit easier so then the threshold pin uh, this one's important because it turns off the output when the voltage supplied to it reaches above two-thirds and then it um, turns on the output, vice versa. So the discharge pin then is pin number seven. And when the output voltage is low, it discharges that capacitor to ground. Um, and sometimes you'll see it called C1 because sometimes there's other capacitors in the circuit depending on your project. And obviously pin eight is our supply voltage, our VCC. So how this whole thing works is at the beginning of, you know, any cycle, the voltage at your capacitor, that, you know, one capacitor, um, and the trigger pin and the threshold pin, because you see that they're all connected, pins two, six, and the capacitor. Um, and those are gonna be low right at the beginning. And then whenever the trigger pin voltage is low, the output is on. So you're getting that, that power. Uh, and the discharge pin is off. Uh, then since the discharge pin is off, the current can flow through resistors one and two, uh, charging the capacitor because it was low, now it's getting charged. Then once the capacitor charges to two thirds VCC, like we talked about, the output is switched off by the threshold pin. So that threshold pin really determines the, the on off. And then the, when the output goes off, the discharge pin switches on. This allows the charge accumulated in capacitor one to drain to ground. Uh, and then once the voltage across your capacitor drops to a third of your supply voltage, the trigger pin then turns off the discharge pin so capacitor one can start charging again so it's a whole like charge discharge charge discharge and that's how you get your your oscillations so you know now all that techie stuff is out of the way let's actually build something right and we're going to use that um that wiring diagram to build it and see if we can start fine-tuning some frequencies so the first thing we're going to need oh and by this uh as we build this one thing from the formula i want to you know, point out, nope, that's not the formula. Uh, this formula right here is that larger values, you can already see for the capacitor, your resistor one, your resistor two, will make the LED blink slower because it's going to have more of an on time or off time, while smaller values of all this stuff is gonna make your LED blink faster in our LED, you know, example. So we can start playing now with the one capacitor and the two resistors. So let's set up the circuit first uh, by setting up this little guy and let's put us in bigger vision view here and uh, let me actually this is very unlike me but I actually created wiring diagrams that I can share with you guys I usually do this after the project and then it's like trying to remember how we wired it and I'm like busting apart the project trying to you know rewire it, and then making wiring diagrams which is what I'm currently doing with the uh, Franken lightning detector and writing down dimensions of the window, uh, making a template for the uh, foam castle. So you guys can recreate all this stuff, uh, the code. I have one more test I wanna run on the code this afternoon and then that's done. But I actually got ahead of the game for the plasma ball and I'll be following my little wiring diagram here that I put. So starting with uh, you know our guy here, let's just stick our I almost lost it. It's so tiny. Look at that. It blends with the table. Let's put this guy in here and I'm going to face that divot upwards. So let's put him like oh, right in the middle, right? And his legs are a little wider than my breadboard. So I need to push them in just a little bit to get them to fit. And I pushed them in a little too much. I was like, nope, I don't want to be part of your crazy projects anymore, woman. All right, so I have the divot. Let me get like a, a pointing pencil of some sort. I have the divot right there. So we know that this is pin one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so let's, let's remember that. And let's start with the easy stuff, which is the power. I'm gonna be using a nine volt battery. So let me move this guy a little bit more over here. And uh, let's not connect the battery quite yet so it doesn't go haywire. All right, so I'm gonna supply the power to our power rail. So those of you that are new to breadboarding, you know, I'll, I'll keep this pretty uh, beginner. Some of you guys that are, you know, very advanced, it's like, okay, yes, we know all that, but I'll try and get through it. Uh, and then, so once we hook this up to power, anything I plug in in this red row will get power. Uh, in here, let's plug this up to ground. So I'm gonna plug it this guy in here. They're kind of short, but they'll work, I think. And so now anything I plug into this blue rail going up and down is going to get power. And then these in the middle work the opposite, you know. So this uh, pin right here, I believe uh, pin 8 was our VCC, yes. So it'll power vertic or horizontally like this. So these power vertically, these power horizontally, you know, or transmit horizontally. So we have our power all set up. And this side of the board now gets power. This is bridging what I call the, the dead zone. You know, these are two halves that don't talk to each other. So in order to get them to talk to each other, let's connect power to power and ground to ground uh, so both sides are supplied. And Dave Beck is saying you can roll him on the table on its side to adjust the pins. Oh, that's, that's a good idea too. Yes. Just making sure he's in there. And, uh, yes. I get to reading your guys' comments and I like space out. Yeah, I get into the conversation, right? So here I have these little jumpers. Now normally I like to use DuPont uh, jumpers when I'm not doing this for you guys. Somehow when I see these, they're a little bit easier to follow on the breadboard than the jumpers that go and make an arc and you're trying to follow which one goes where, you know. So I'm gonna try and use uh, these guys. And the only thing that I kind of don't like about these guys is if you look at the, um, get it to focus here. Maybe if I hold it, you know, closer to you, it tends to want to focus. Hello. Uh, there we go. So you see this uh, little wire from using it a lot. Sometimes it'll break off. And it's kind of annoying when it breaks off inside your breadboard because now that you can't use, you know, that little insert. Uh, so I haven't found a good way of removing it yet. I'm thinking there's one broken in here that maybe I can use it like a magnet or something to remove it. So if you guys have any ideas of how to remove these tiny little broken pins from in here, I'd love to hear it. So we're going to connect from our power here to the power of the other side. There we go. And you know, you can connect it anywhere. It's, it's all good. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the negative or the ground. So I'm just going to connect from here to this ground over here. I'm trying to use like colors that make sense, like red for power and this kind of gray thing that I have. It's like a black gray for, for ground to kind of match our power supply here, you know, for, for our battery. So, so far, we got our, our situation here pretty good here. Uh, our pow we're powered up. So let's start connecting these pins in order to blink our LED. So looking back at this diagram here, starting with one, one goes to ground. Okay, we can handle that, that's easy. One goes to ground. We can definitely handle that one. So let me grab kind of another similar color uh, looking one and let's connect this one to pin one to ground. So those of you that are new to breadboards, here's pin one. So any dot here that I connect to is going to get ground. And I'm gonna connect it to any one of here. So that's grounded for our pin one. And I'm kind of doing this like out of the way because we're gonna have other wires kind of going in the middle. So out of the way is, is always best. So that's pin one. So let's check out here. Let's go to pin two. Now pin two is also connected to pin six. So we're gonna have to bridge those two. So let's uh, go ahead and do that and connect. Um, what color am I gonna use? Maybe blue, blue is nice. Yeah, so let's do pin two. And you know what, for this, I'm gonna put my eyeballs on. I should have done this before. There, ooh, ooh, I'm not gonna see anything with these dirty eyeballs all right good 
now I can see. So we're gonna do, what did I say? Pin two to, we'll do pin two over here, to pin six. So five, six, it's this second one right here. Probably not a good idea to be going over your component, but eh, you know, just have a little rainbow over him like that. So we bridged our pin two to pin six. And what else gets connected? Uh, here to to pin two. Uh, oh yes, our capacitor, our capacitor. So let's go ahead and connect that. And for this, I'm going to use like my little kit here, guys. Let's see what kind of capacitor party I got going on here. So for this, let's use a. I got my little my little chart here of. Uh, different values. So I say we pick like a 100 microfarad. Well, let's just start with that and see what happens. So let's see, grab you and with my eyes, you know how sometimes it gets like a little disorganized. I'm just making sure that it is indeed our 100 microfarad, yes. So we're good there. I'm gonna move this out of the way and let's uh, connect this up. And I said, this goes to pin two, right? Let's see, pay attention guys. Somebody's got to, right? Yeah. And we have Trixo joining us and uh, he's asking, what are we doing? <clears throat> and I just uh, inhaled some uh, shock dust from, you know, our barbecue cart project. So I'm going to connect this capacitor and we're going to do a quick review of what we're doing. And I had said that it needs to connect to pin two, right? So here is pin two. And so I'm connecting the positive, you know, so it's got the different size leads. And let's see if I can get that to focus right here. Focus right here, people. Well, even blurry. <laughs> you can see that one lead is longer than the other lead. And perhaps I'll do this. Yes. So the positive, the positive lead is always the long one and the negative is a short one. But just in case somebody chopped them off and you don't know, the negative on these polarized are always marked by those little negatives. Uh, and so we want to make sure that that's connected to the ground. So I want to put this capacitor out of the way. And so I'm going to hook that to pin two. So you see along the horizontal there. I'm going to put this leg kind of out of the way. Let's put you over here and let's lean you, lean you this way. So uh, Trixel was asking, what are we doing? We're putting together a 555 timer circuit in a stable mode because we're gonna use this to control the high voltage uh, to our plasma ball. We're making our own plasma ball from a light bulb. And then we're gonna take this cool plasma bulb and make a lamp out of it. Uh, so next stream should also be interesting because you know that's when we play with uh, some high voltage. So I believe we're done with pin two, aren't we? Uh, let's see here. I think so. I think we're done with pin two. So let's move on to pin three, which is the output. This is going to be going to our LED. So let's, uh, let's do that. And this timer uh, for Trixo is going to be blinking uh, at a certain specified rate. And we're gonna play around and see what that is. So for an LED, we got a couple color options right here. And oh, look at this red one. It's in the wrong place. For its insolence, it's gonna get used. Oh yeah, it was like, oh, I'm gonna hide with these other LEDs so this woman doesn't choose me and probably massacre me. Nope, mm -mm. now you just uh, volunteered there. Uh, so with our LED, now, you know, again, a 555 timer circuit, in this mode, you only need one capacitor and two resistors to determine your frequency. Now, because we're putting in an LED, we definitely want a resistor with that. So this kind of resistor goes with this LED and we're gonna ignore it, you know, for the most part. So let me bend it here. And our output was which pin? Oh, I'm already forgetting. Pin three. So we are going to hook up this LED via this resistor from pin three. So let me count the pins, one, two, it's right here. So let me put him completely out of the way as well. Uh, put him like here and bend him. And there we go. So now I've, uh, in essence, activated, you know, this row as well. And then we're going to put our LED um, 
coming from the resistor. And again, the long leg is your positive, so that's just gonna go there. And then the little short leg is gonna go into our blue negative rail. So now we have our output pin three hooked up. Let's see if anything else happens with pin three. I don't think so. Yeah, no, that's fine. So now let's look at pin four is our reset. And if I recall, we have to bridge that with pin eight. So pin four to pin eight. And you know what? I'll use another little blue guy here. Let's bridge them. This is getting kind of squishy. So here's pin four down at the bottom and pin eight is this very top one. So ooh, it makes kind of like a crisscross. Let me see if I can... Uh, I find that when things are kind of shallow like this, they're kind of easier to follow, like where all the wires go versus the big, long, you know, uh, DuPont wires. There we go, get that to focus up. And for the time being, I'm gonna remove this power because the camera will always focus on what is closest to it. So it's trying to focus on that and voila, now it's focusing on the board and we don't need it right now anyways. We're not powering anything for the moment. So uh, Trixo is saying, is this part of some YouTube series or something? I am confused. You seem to have energy like when you drink five energy drinks. Okay, well, I'll tell you why I got energy. And quality of stream is good too. Well, thank you. Uh, it's something that I've been working on a lot. And uh, uh, Dave Beck is saying crossing rainbows. <laughs> Indeed, that's what we're doing. Although for rainbows, I think we need like more colors. You know, blue's kind of a boring rainbow. Uh, so for uh, Trixo, um, it's a series in that every Monday we do a free public stream uh, and then every Wednesday we do a members only stream and they get their own special projects and we're streaming on Saturday today because you know Wednesday didn't work out one of the parts didn't come in on time so we're, we're kind of you know making up time uh, and so for this what we're doing is building this 555 timer in order to drive our light bulb plasma ball and we're going to get those streamers and you know when you touch a plasma ball um and there we go my switcher is like covered in dust so it doesn't even recognize when i touch it it's like what's happening uh so when we get those cool plasma balls and you put your hands on it you get those streamers that go out to your hands but when you don't have your hands on it you still get some nice streamers so this is basically going to help us achieve that uh, or otherwise you can pump a high voltage to a light bulb and it just like doesn't look all that interesting. So to answer uh, Trixos, yes, this is kind of a series where we dedicate between four and eight streams per project. So you guys get to watch it being built. And not only that, the best part of I think what I do and what I love doing is getting your guys' input. Like this whole thing actually was your guys' idea. I had suggested something else and you guys were like, yeah, I'm not interested. So uh, building a plasma ball was your idea and then it was also your guys' idea to display it as a cool dragon lamp. So that means I gotta find a way to sculpt a dragon and learn how to sculpt a dragon. So thank you very much for that, you know, but I'm excited to, to learn that. So if you go to the YouTube channel and check out some previous streams, there are some replays still available. I make... Um, highlights as well and then members of course have access to the entire archive you know so if you want to watch some of the old projects like our fart detector our butt kicking machine and our franken lightning detector inspired by frankenstein of course so continuing on here let's see we got through which pin see i get to yapping and i forget what i'm doing so four. Oh yes, four, we did connect pin four to pin eight because we're not using the reset in this uh, particular instance. And then anything else with uh, our pin four? I don't think so, it doesn't look like it. So let's move on to pin five. Uh, so pin five, we are not going to be using. Normally, if you're not gonna be using it, you wanna connect it to that 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor. But I'm leaving that off for now so we can only deal with the one capacitor and two resistors. All right, moving on to pin, after five it comes six, right? <laughs> so six gets connected to two. Well, we already did that, so that's pretty awesome. And let's go to pin seven. Ah, now we're getting some resistors and you can see resistor A and B, or I just call them resistor one and two. So let's get that hooked up. And to make life super easy, I thought, you know what? Let's just use two resistors of the exact same value to get started. And I'll put these down here so it focuses. Uh, and so these are 1K resistors. So we have our one capacitor and now we're gonna hook up our two resistors. So this first resistor then goes from pin six 
five, six goes from this guy right here. And he goes to pin seven. Pin seven, yes. I was second guessing myself. So as my hands are totally in the way, I will show you kind of what I did here in a second. As soon as I get to move my hands. There we go. So our resistors connected from pin six here into pin seven there. And the little leads kind of don't make anything super easy, but you know. So anything else going on in pin seven? Let's take a look here at our diagram. Hmm. So it looks like pin seven is also connects up our other resistor, which then connects up to power. So let's get that going. And again, we're gonna use the exact same value, the 1K resistor. And so let's get that hooked up. So this one goes also from pin seven. So I'm going to use, ooh, the last spare little hole there. And it connects to power. So anywhere along this red here, I'm just gonna pick something kind of out of the way and convenient. Let's go all the way over here. There we go. It's kind of bent funny, but you know, it works. So we have our resistor one and our resistor two and our capacitor. And by varying any one of these, it should affect the rate at which this blinks. So finally for pin eight, let's see, do we have anything going on for pin eight? Pin eight is our supply power. So let's get that uh, whole thing hooked up. And for that, I'm going to use, let's see, this little red one right here, you know, red for power. So here is pin eight. Oh, and this is entirely too small. Do I have anything bigger that is red for power? Maybe I don't. Okay. I've got this long one here. And oh, guys, look. A broken see this one is probably the one that is like lodged up in here and I got to find a way to remove it here we go here's one that is not lodged but here is our pin 8 and so I want to trace the little inputs and you know what I want to move this guy he's kind of maybe I'll move him over here because he's totally got in the way so let's move them there and I'm going to cheat and kind of tilt this up to me so I can actually see what I'm doing and do this. There we go. So theoretically, <laughs> actually it's not theoretical, it's uh, actual. You can see that uh, our pin eight over here, if you trace the, the dots or the inputs is connected to our uh, power, which is connected to this power rail, which is in turn connected to this power rail, which is in turn connected to our batteries. So I think that's it, guys. Do we have everything? I'm just looking at my own uh, wiring diagram that I put together earlier here. We have our crisscross going on. We have our resistors. So I think we're ready to, to try this out. You know, let's uh, let's do it here. And here's my battery. And I'm going to connect this uh, battery up here these little snaps are always kind of weird you know kind of tough sometimes oh, when you get that crisp snap then you know you're you're doing business so I'm gonna put that there and as soon as I connect these theoretically that uh, things to start uh, blinking so let's see what happens oh. all right so it's blinking kind of like kind of quick you know so let's see what happens. Remember, the higher the value uh, of any of these components, the slower this will blink. Well, let's see if that's true. Uh, and David Beck is saying, light this candle, smoke test. Yes, yes, indeed. So it's, it's, it's working. So let's try and, uh, you know, take one of them out and put something else in there. So which one do we want to take out? Uh, oh, wrong, uh, wrong formula there. So why don't we do, hmm, why don't we do like number one? Number one, yes. Let's see what happens if we switch one of these guys out, one of these resistors. So I'm going to unpower this here for a second or you know, remove power from it and let's do, let's go nuts. 
I have a 22K resistor here. Let's just switch. Remember, we're going from 1K to 22K. So let's see what happens. This theoretically should uh, get it to blink slower. And here, let me uh, get my glasses on. So the one I'm switching out is this one. And this one goes from pin seven to pin, or to power. There we go. So we got a 1K and a 22K. Uh, and let's see what happens now. Theoretically, it should blink slower according to the formula. Oh yeah, that does blink like a lot slower. Look at that. And so the same is true if we were to swap out the capacitor or if we were to swap out this. But herein lies the problem. Okay, so we were blinking an LED, we're blinking it at different frequencies, which I didn't show you like that formula. So this is the frequency formula. So say you want a certain frequency, like I need this thing to blink um, 95 times a second, you know? So you can put that for frequency and then work backwards and get your other resistors and your capacitor value so you can get that certain frequency. And that's pretty much what we're after. We're after a very specific frequency, which we don't know what that is. So if we don't know what frequency we need, how are we going to pick out our capacitors and our resistors and all that kind of stuff? So I think the best way to do this is to hook up this 555 timer to the light bulb high voltage circuit and start swapping out these components until we get that resonance we need, resonance we need, and uh, we start seeing streamers uh, coming out of our light bulb. But that's kind of annoying, like to kind of have to keep stopping and switching these out, especially if we don't know what kind of frequency we need. So I got a better idea. Why don't we switch one of these resistors out for a um, potentiometer? That way we can cycle through ever so slightly all of the resistances, we're depending on the potentiometer, you know, that you choose. And that way we get different frequencies from very slow to really, really fast. And at some point we're gonna get that frequency that resonates and we get those streamers. So let's just make a slight change to this circuit and add a potentiometer and see how that works. I think that's gonna be the best way to sync this with our high output voltage uh, into our light bulb. So let's take a look here at what we're gonna change. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just switch switch this back to, to how we had it. Oh, and let's let's depower it. Yeah, get the power off there. And I'm gonna take this guy and put him back in here. Goodbye, 22. And this one was in which, this one was in seven. Yes, it was in seven. I'm kind of forgetting. All right, too many pins, pin eight. I could do up to four pins. After that, then I gotta keep uh, referring to the diagram. So I'm just kind of making sure I didn't criss crisscross anything. So now we have everything reset to normal and let's replace uh, this guy right here with a potentiometer. Let me go to my uh, pre-made diagram here that I made up and I'm gonna share all this with you guys so you can make your own potentiometer and you can even use a photoresistor in order to change, you know, uh, resistances too. So if you wanna make any like light activated type of projects, it's, you know, a great way to do it. So let's switch up our uh, resistor number two, which is this guy that is bridging from s uh, six to seven, yes. Oh, and the other one was connected to six, my mistake. I think I said seven, so I take that back, I take that back. Uh, so let's get rid of this guy here and let's swap in a potentiometer. So here again, I have another kit full of potentiometers and I say, let's just do like a simple 10K, you know, 10K. <laughs> and you know, for our light bulb, I'll probably use anywhere from like a 50K to I don't know, maybe like 100K, you know, we'll, we'll play around and see what kind of streamers we get next week. So uh, hold on a second here. Here's a little 10K. Yep. So where am I going to put him on our board? Let's put him somewhere like totally out of the way. So that way he's not, and you can see he's got three little, oh, three little legs. And I'm going to put him so the, the one leg in the front here is kind of facing this way, making our lives easier. So let me kind of 
I'm gonna lightly put them in here because depending on the lengths of like little wires I have, I might have to move them a little bit closer. So what we're gonna do is now bridge it the same way using pins six and seven. So I'll, I'm gonna stick with blue. Blue has been uh, very kind to us uh, during this build. So let's just uh, stick with blue. And I'm going to start with pin six, which is this one right here. And I'm going to put pin six in the middle leg. So let's see where I can uh, reach. I'm going to move, I'm going to jump you kind of over here and put you here. So pin six, six <laughs> is going to the middle leg of my potentiometer. And then now we're going to hook up pin seven to any of the other two remaining legs. It really doesn't matter. So let's see if I can sneak a pin seven up in here, like right there. And I know it's like, wow, I see a whole bunch of hands. <laughs> I'll remove my hands at some point so you guys can kind of see what's going on. And let's see if I can, uh, you need the hands of a four-year-old for this. There we go. So we have pin six connected to the center pin of the potentiometer and you have pin seven connected to any of the other two outside legs, doesn't matter. So theoretically now, once we power this on, we should be able to adjust the potentiometer and change the, the speed of the blinking, meaning changing the frequency, how many pulses per second we're getting. And this is the same kind of mechanics that we're gonna use to drive the high voltage to our light bulb. So let me grab a, look at how tiny that is. I need a tiny little screw, <clears throat> screwdriver here. So let's see my flat head. Something like that would probably work. So, Let's see here, and let me power it up on up, baby. Hopefully I got every, I didn't double check that all this is connected properly, but you know, okay. Uh-oh. What happened? I think it's dead. All right, let me double check my, my connections real quick, making sure everything is kind of plugged in. goes on for a second try a different let's just wait a second maybe it's just really slow and I'm getting all like excited so we'll give it a second to see if it I blink there for a second and so maybe the on is very that's too slow it should have gone on by now so did it just blink or was that just a shadow While we leave it, I will uh, just double check here, double check my math here. So we have our power properly. This is going to here, this is going to here, and they're nice and tight. Our pin one is going to ground like it's supposed to. Our pin number two is bridging over to pin number six like it's supposed to. And pin two also has our capacitor, which is hasn't been touched. So it theoretically should be uh, correct. Let's look at our pin three, which is, let's see, pin three's got nothing going on, except uh, that's our out actually. So pin three, I'm gonna follow it along and we have our resistor connected to over here and that's our uh, LED there. And that hasn't been touched, so that should be good. Pin four here is connected. It bridges over to pin eight. And I'm just gonna double check that diagram. Pin four, it bridges over to pin eight. Yes, it does. So this is live people, anything can happen. This is what typically happens. All right. Yeah, so it like, uh, something's going on. So I'll check the connections and then we'll start playing with this because that might get it to uh, get working again. So we talked about pin four, right? So pin four goes to pin eight and then pin five has nothing going on. Pin six uh, is bridged over to pin two like it's supposed to. And then it goes from pin six uh, to the center pin of our, do I have a 
So I'm backwards? No, it's rightwards. <laughs> pin six. And then uh, pin six is also connected to... Um, oh, I might have put this in the wrong place. That would explain it. Uh, my resistor one is accidentally into pin six, where it's supposed to be into pin seven. See? I need better glasses, people. <laughs> That's basically what's happening. All right, so we see that it's blinking. And what happens if we start messing around with our potentiometer? So this is turned all the way one way. So we're gonna turn it very slowly the other way and see what happens. Oh, it's getting faster. It's getting faster. Oh, it's gonna go crazy. Look at that. Now I have it turned all the way to the other way. Now on camera, I don't know if you can see it, but it is flickering so quick that it looks like it's solid. But I can tell just like a tiny little shadow underneath it, it is flickering. So that's like a high frequency, many, many pulses per, per second is happening here. And then as we turn it back down, less pulses. Now I think that this is going to be a much much easier way to try and tune this to our light bulb rather than switch out this resistor this resistor that capacitor you know and <clears throat> trying out different potentiometers next week if we can't get our resonance that's when we start messing around with the different capacitors you know and things like that because this is pretty much handling the changes in resistance so you can see just three components a capacitor and two resistors is all you need to try and get that blink or that metronome or that timed effect that you're looking for, uh, which you see in, in a lot of the toys, you know, sometimes it's not a fancy microprocessor. So I think we have mastered step one because this is pretty much the most important component of our plasma ball. Uh, we can certainly drive high power to our plasma, you know, our light bulb, but it's going to look kind of lame, you know. And then after we master this, we get the light bulb going. Uh, I would definitely like to try and build our own plasma ball because like I was saying, the circuit we can master. We can find a wiring diagram for a plasma ball and just recreate it ourselves. Uh, but it's the actual containment of the ball and the streamers itself that's the challenge you know you need like a, a vacuum those inert gases uh to contain everything so that that's tougher and you get all that built in with a light bulb so i figure you know path of least resistance and uh, i'll grab a couple different light bulbs and hopefully i can find one that's like really huge maybe i can find a good sized light bulb like for an outdoor uh, lamp and it has to be incandescent uh it can't be led or else it won't work obviously. So um, I can't wait to try that out. So I have an ignition coil on the way because that's what we're going to use to drive it with a MOSFET, which is going to basically take these pulses and then, you know, control our high output voltage to the light bulb. And hopefully we'll find the resonance that we need to get those really cool streamers. And also guys, don't forget to hop on Discord because we're at the very beginning of the project. This is the perfect time to start like inputting all of your ideas and we try and like integrate as many of them as possible. So we already have the idea that we want this to be a table lamp because we are gonna have to plug it in. So it's going to either have to be a floor lamp or table lamp. And you guys already said you want some kind of dragon integrated into this. So I'm either going to have to carve one out of wood or mold one out of clay. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out and we'll see what kind of dragon I come up with. Hopefully not too, too lame, you know, or like a five-year-old's craft project. Maybe we'll paper mache a dragon together, you know, that's... It's easy for everybody. And uh, again, thank you guys, uh, especially you Wrench Army members, because it's because of you that we're doing this very, very cool project. Uh, and I'll be having all of the wiring diagrams from the previous project and the ones that I'm using right now so you can replicate this for your own projects. Kind of mess around, you know, before the light bulbs. But most importantly, do hop on Discord. Tell me what you want to see. I mean, that's why we do all this, right? So thanks again for joining me on a different day than normal. And I will catch you guys uh, back next week. And we're going to continue our barbecue cart, barbecue cart duino project and then jump back on this uh, next Wednesday. Have a great rest of the weekend. Bye.